forty five year female with severe left uh, radiculopathy having left lateral recess stenosis with interlaminar approach. Once you put a scope inside, this is what it looks like. Muscle fragments are there removed. So nine o'clock being cranial, three o'clock being caudal. You can see at six o'clock the bony structure, that's the facet and the facet laminar junction of L4, where I'm clearing the tissue, clearing the edge of uh, inferior facet. That's the inferior most part of the inferior facet. So as we go superiorly, it continues as lamina. So I start drilling at the inferior most part of the inferior facet. So once you drill, go superiorly, drill the facetal laminar junction and the lamina. So bit by bit, it should be removed. It should be drilled nicely. Always remove the soft tissue when we are drilling. Once it is drilled, the soft tissue is uh, coagulated with RF so that it has a very good uh, clear uh, visualization of the edges. Once we do this, so you can use RF to shrink the edges of the tissue, delineate the, always the edges. This is the edge of the facet, facet laminar junction. And building the inferior uh, border of the inferior facet medially. Once it is done, and go to the lamina, drill the lamina. Here being L4, L5 lateral recess, the uh, interlaminar window is small when compared to L5, S1. We need to drill a little bit more. The lamina need to be drilled more. That has to be kept in mind. And also here we are using a, a 8 mm sheet with a 4 mm working channel, Wolf scope. Richard Wolf score. So the sheet which is 8 mm has to sit in, in that window nicely. And always we should have a 3D orientation where the we need to reach the lateral part of the L5 roof. So the drilling should be good so that we can drill till the lateral edge of the roof. So here I am again delineating the edge of the facet. So there is always a debate how much facet uh, should be drilled when we are doing L4 side. You correlate on MRI how much superior facet is overhanging in that area and that decides our uh, end point of the drilling. Here the superior facet is little bit overhanging. So we need to reach till the medial part of the superior facet. So now I have drilled the inferior facet. As we drill further, we will reach the superior facet medial border. Once that is seen, that is the end point where we can drill just a bit of superior facet so that the recess is well open. Here, now I am drilling the inferior facet towards the lamina. You can see that the superior facet is getting exposed now. You can see that's the superior facet. Now I am using a diamond bar so that uh, the bleeding of the facet it will be stopped with the diamond bar. That's the superior facet which I have delineated. So once that is delineated well, so that is the area we need to drill so that the recess opens up completely. If you don't drill this, still the root will be underneath this superior facet border and the patient continues to have symptoms. So always try to correlate with the MRI and drill it nicely. So once the medial border of the superior facet is also drilled nicely, the recess gets opened up. Here because we are using a diamond drill, the drill it is safer and always when you use a drill, the direction of force should be outwards, not anteriorly, so that it should not plunge. So the, always it should be outwards. So now I push the sleeve inside and check for the movement. So the sleeve is snugly fitting here and still there is some bone hitching the sleeve. So I just drill the, a bit of that edge of that facet so that my sleeve sits snugly, straight, not obliquely. Once it is done here, I am removing the superficial layer of the yellow ligament because here there is a lateral stenosis. The ligament is thickened. 
I remove the superficial layer of the yellow ligament, so that opening of the yellow ligament is easy later on. So I just re remove the superficial layer of the yellow ligament. Now you can see the entire gutter is clearly seen, and I remove the superficial layer from upper lamina to the lower lamina. It's the lower laminar edge. I remove the yellow ligament here. Once it is removed, so what happens? Uh, entering the peak, entering the canal, spinal canal is easy, and later once we open the ligament, seeing the fecal sac and doing our disc work will be easy if we remove the ligament partially. So I am removing the yellow ligament here, and now the yellow ligament is nicely thinned out. So with using a small punch or a cutter, we can just enter the epidural space. So I'm just using a cutter and you can see the epidural fat there nicely and I just cut laterally. Medially, from medial to lateral is always ideal because medially you have an epidural fat cushion. So I'm cutting from medial to lateral towards the facet area. Once this is done, you can see the recess we have drilled nicely so removing this ligament once this uh, epidural space is exposed drilling might be risky so before exposing the epidural space bony work should be done correctly this comes with experience but always do the bony work before opening the yellow ligament once this yellow ligament is open remove the ligament in the lateral recess from upper lamina to the lower laminar edge. Here I'm removing the ligament towards the lower lamina edge. That's the lower laminar edge. So now I completely expose the root, remove the fat or a flimsy layer lateral to the root. That's the edge of the fecal sac. But here one unusual thing is you can see the root, uh, that is the traversing root is completely transverse. Normally the traversing root is oblique. Here in this case, it is completely transverse or horizontal line of the root is there. So this happens when there is an axillary fragment or any osteophyte which pushes the root more horizontal. You can see this is a disc or a hard osteophyte which has pushed the root. You can see that's a disc which has pushed the root horizontally, which is not a normal lie of the root. So now we'll just push the, this is important, otherwise we'll injure the traversing root. So if we keep there and rotate our cannula or the sheath, we'll injure the axilla. So always be careful, identify the anatomy. So now I'm pushing the traversing root medially, mobilizing the traversing root medially, and push the sleeve down and rotate the sleeve. Now my sleeve is protecting the traversing root this is the beauty of full endoscopy where there is no need for additional retractor. So your work is very neat, smooth and very accurate. So once it is done, I'm just entering the disc space. Here you can see at three o'clock, there is a hard osteophyte hump. That's the osteophyte hump I'm trying to cut with my cutter. So once it is done, because it was hard, and bony, I use the mill, 2.5 mm mill I'm using to just flatten it out. So you can see I'm just flattening it out, the hump, which was there at the body of S5, L5, sorry. So I'm just flattening the hump there. Once it is flattened, hemostasis is attained, and the, the remaining fibrous hump is removed using the cutter. So that's the remaining the disc space, it's upper uh, area, and this is medially that's a hard fibrous hump that is also being cut and removed. If we leave this hump, the narrow root remains tented, remains compressed, and the patient will have 
uh, some chronic symptoms. So always try to remove the humps below the root. The rest of the disc is tackled as usual way. The remaining bits are uh, loose fragments are removed. Once the uh, remaining fragments are removed, the loose fragments are shrunk using RF and uh, again confirm. And you can now see the lie of the root has become more oblique now, which was horizontal. This was the hump, bony hump, and the fibrous hump, which was pushing the root more laterally. That hump was pushing the root like this laterally just below the facet as a result of which it was getting strangulated and getting more pain. So now the lie of the root has become more oblique which is usually seen and then completely decompressed. Thank you. The small stitch patient goes home.